Top officials across the country are keeping a careful watch on the recommendations of a German terror expert who interviewed six Minnesota men involved in the terror trial. In a first of its kind experiment in the United States, federal judge Michael Davis hired the expert to make de radicalization assessments and create individualized programs for the men. All six pleaded guilty to plotting to travel overseas and join ISIS. Esme Murphy is one of only a few reporters who interviewed not only Daniel Kohler, but Minnesota's chief federal probation officer about what some are calling a pioneering effort to stop the spread of terror recruiting. Is it possible to de radicalize them? It is possible, not with each and every one. Daniel Kohler has performed 200 de radicalization assessments in Europe on both radical jihadis and neo Nazis. And I believe that people can correct these errors and can reform and reintegrate. But the de-radicalization process Daniel Kohler detailed in two days of testimony is rigorous, requiring specialized intensive counseling, education, and perhaps most importantly, a willing defendant. The question is really, are they lying to me? Are they on their own disclosing information? Are they comprehensive? It was the case of 10 Minnesota terror suspects charged in 2014 and 2015 that convinced federal authorities a new approach was needed. The Twin Cities men were all in their teens or early 20s, many enrolled in college, and none had criminal records. These cases were different than any other type of cases we had seen. Chief Probation Officer Kevin Lowry said one concern is that just throwing young terror recruits in prison could create a larger threat. They go into prison, they radicalize others, they become more radicalized. Some of those folks may get out sooner than these folks and carry out lone wolf terrorist acts. Kohler said he found immediate similarities in the Minnesota cases and the cases he has worked on in Europe. I was astonished, actually. But unlike some European countries, U.S. prisons have no de-radicalization programs in place. Well, that is a huge concern because obviously my recommendations are based on the fact that there's someone available who can uh, execute these recommendations. And the U.S. is currently about 16 to 20 years behind. Now, Kohler has begun training federal probation officers here in Minnesota on how to set up these de-radicalization programs. Now, Judge Michael Davis stressed that Kohler's evaluations and treatment recommendations will not be the only factors in determining the sentences he gives out in November. The six face a maximum of 15 years in prison. The chief probation officer would not say how much the U.S. government is paying Kohler. Kevin Lowry says that is confidential information. Did Kohler talk about maybe signs, warning signs that family and friends can look at just to see if maybe someone they know has become radicalized? Or you know, he, he actually did, Amelia, and this is really interesting. He says that in 95% of the cases he has reviewed, there is what he calls leakage, that individuals start talking about radical ideas, they change their friends, they change the kinds of social media postings they are making. In other words, they change, and mm -hmm. oftentimes family and friends just ignore it or don't pick it up or think it's a phase. All right. Thank you, Esme.